dogs, golf, and machining. How are these things related and why you should care? Because it may in fact crash your machine. in mash cam we've got this big 3d shape part we've been extra careful with our programming getting all of our speeds and feeds cutting parameters and linking parameters all set just right uh, we take the extra time launch into verify to make sure our program is completely crash proof we verify it everything is good i've even got my uh, collision checking turned on and it should pause if there was to be a collision uh, even if there was not a pause we should see red on this model if things went bad so we post this out into G-code, take it out to the shop floor, start cutting our part, which we'll simulate here inside of Vericut. So I've got a Haas mini mill loaded up and I've got my part loaded into the vise. And if we go ahead and play through this simulation here, and again, Vericut will, uh, this will be simulating the G-code file that I've created from Mastercam. And so far, everything's looking just great. It's going just how we would expect until we get to the very end of our program and looking at our part view, I've got some red over here on this model. So what's happening there? I've got crashes along the back of my part and the side of my part. So what's gone wrong here? So what showed up in mash cam showed it being perfectly fine. I come over and verify it in Vericut. Things are now crashing. So what's going on? Let's head into our drawing board app here for a quick minute and see if we can uh, explain what's going on here in the background. It's not overly complex, but basically if we're starting here and let's say we're moving over, uh, let's draw a line here and say that's four inches and we'll do another one over here and we'll assume that's four inches as well. Let's draw in a vertical line here and let's say uh, again, this is four inches and one more again. Four inches. So let's assume a few things here. Let's say that our X axis when in the rapid mode, let's get a different color here. Uh, we'll go at 1000 inches per minute. Our Y axis, let's just make these the same color here, does the same. It does the exactly the same rapid free rate, 1000 inches per minute. So when we command a position of X, let's say again, this is going to be zero. If we tell it to go to x4, y4, and both of these axes move at their maximum rapid rate, we will obviously arrive at the destination at the same time. They're both moving the same distance. They're both traveling at the same speed. Uh, they will arrive at their destination at the same time. So now what happens when we tell this to go to x8 and y4? So one of two things is gonna happen here. So Scenario number one will be, again, this is depending on the machine, what could happen is that you will start at X0, Y0, and you will rapid and end up at the correct location. You'll do a straight line movement all the way there. Scenario number two, let's go over to uh, say this color here. Option number two would be that both axes, again, move at the fastest they can until they get to their destination. So since it doesn't have to travel as far in Y, it will arrive at the destination first. And once that's reached, it will carry on only in the leftover direction. So it needs to travel an additional four inches in X and it carries that out by itself. So that's scenario number two. And this is what we refer to as a dog leg rapid. So that's the dog leg right there. And then again, I guess if you want to know the name for the other version, this is what we refer to as a linear style rapid. So obviously you can see the differences here. One machine is doing a straight line, even though one axis is traveling farther than the other. And the other one is uh, doing this dog leg. So one is not more advantageous versus the other. You're still going to arrive here at the same time, no matter which of these motions you do. The problem comes from when you are expecting to see this green line and you get the yellow line or vice versa you are expecting the green you get the yellow or you expect the yellow and get the green so yeah if you're trying to avoid clamps fixtures part of your machine part of the part um bad things are going to happen so that's what a dog leg rapid is let's go and have a look at this now in mastercam so here in mastercam i've got a a crude part drawn up here just to kind of explain this and give an example so we're doing a, a cut on the wall here 
multiple cuts in between these cuts, I'm having to wrap it back to the beginning of the cut and it's having to move more in X than it is in Y. So here we're getting a linear interpolated rapid, but you can see if we get a dog leg, this little boss right here is probably going to be a problem. Uh, so step one in all of this is you need to know what your machine is going to do. Is your machine going to do dog legs or is it going to do linear rapids? So you need to go to your machine and basically type that in uh, G00 X10 Y5 or whatever it is. As long as one axis is more than the other, uh, push go, cycle start and see if it does a straight line or see if it does a dog leg. Then you come back to mash cam and you want to see that exact same behavior over here. Now with that, I will say there's a few things you need to watch for because there are a few booby traps. Now, look at my program right now. This looks like a linear rapid. If I back plot it, we'll see it is still a linear rapid. If I verify this, uh, I didn't get any cuts through here, so that's still a, a linear rapid. Now, where we control this, I'm going to go into my files here, go into the edit. Now, I am editing the file copy of the machine here. This is another topic for another video, you know, disk copy versus file copy. But I'm going to go into the control setting for my machine. And what I'm after here is linear and right up here, rapid motion. So look here, it says all axes arrive at the destination simultaneously. That's your linear interpolated rapids. If that's not what your machine does, this is the one you want to check box here. Each axis moves at the maximum feed rate independently. So I'll green check. Yes, I changed some information, so that's okay. Okay, green check. I find here, if you do this mid-program, you will need to regen your toolpaths for that effect to take over. But notice my back plot here is still showing linear rapids. Where you're going to see a problem is when I hop over to verify. Let me just slow this down because we actually see it this time. There, I rapided right through my part. I don't have my stop condition turned on, so let's maybe let's turn that on there so we actually see this collision happen. And I'll have to reset there. And there's the pause because I've cut through or rapided through my part there. So let me just turn off that initial stock so you can see the problem. So I'm seeing the dog leg rapid in verify and I will see it in this back plot. So let me hop into the back plot again. This is not the back plot in the main software. It's in the verify interface and this one, there's the feeds and there you're seeing the dog leg rapid. So over here, I'm going to see that dog leg rapid, but I'm not seeing it in the, uh, this is referred to as the classic back plot. I know there's not a switch anymore, so they don't really refer to it as classic, but, uh, uh, this is the old school back plot and it's not showing the dog leg even though I've got the control set up to do that. If your machine does do dog leg rapids and you've set mash cam up for it, just know that you're not going to see that come out in this back plot anyways. You're going to want to step it up and do the verify or even machine sim to confirm that you are in fact getting good code. Other options for addressing dog leg rapids. Majority of the tool paths in Mastercam now have the ability to output feed moves instead of rapids. So when you check this box inside of your tool path, and this is available for a lot of the 3D tool paths as well. Let me just screen check. Notice that move is no longer yellow. That is now a feeding, a high feed rate move, 500 inches per minute in this, this case. And feed rate moves, G01s always arrive at the destination at the same time. It doesn't matter what happens. So there you can see the straight line. If we hop into our verify, we'll single step through here. And there again, so I still have my machine set up for rapids, dog leg rapids, but we're not going to see a dog leg rapid because we're not actually rapiding anymore. So that's one possible fix there is using the output feed move override in each specific tool path. So with this toolpath, let's just have a quick peek at the resulting G code. So there we're going to see uh, all of our rapid moves are now the high feed F500 feed rate. So these are all cut motions here. There's a retract right there, 500 inches per minute, reposition back down to depth for the next cut. So we're seeing all high feed moves. Now there is another option. Let me go back into this, this toolpath, turn that off, forcing us back into rapids. And again, that one is specific to each tool path. Now there is a way to turn this switch on that all rapids, no matter where in your program they come up, will always be output as feed moves. And again, back to the control definition, 
If we come down to our feed, we've got the option here to convert rapid to maximum feed rate. Now, again, this is going to take over every single rapid move in the program. And let's have a look at the difference here. Green check all this, rebuild our toolpath. Notice the rapids still show up as rapids in our verify and backplot. So there the backplot is still going to do exactly the thing we saw before. Uh, if we happen to verify, notice we are going to see dogleg behavior. However, when we post this into G-code, we're going to see that same high feed rate behavior. So there's our slight retract. Uh, full retract 500 inches per minute, uh, reposition at that still high feed rate. We do get a G0 here down to the initial um, retract plane or feed plane, and then again feeding down to depth. So all of our in-between rapids are the high feed rate, but with that switch, we're not seeing that getting relayed into our verify. So uh, probably not a, a great choice. Uh, I would I would lean towards making the feed rate override in the tool pass the default setting as opposed to doing this this global switch to your tool paths inside of your control definition so i'm going to turn all that stuff back off green check okay save yes 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 so in in closing here again if we're in master cam let me just bring up that 3d part for a second uh in the 3d tool pass you even have more options over here as far as the types of retracting that you want to do and again you can still override those and force them into feeding motions, high feed, feed motions instead of your rapids, if that's what you need to have happen in order to get the behavior you want so you don't get crashes. Uh, but one more thing in closing to touch on, and that's the fact that some machines are able to do either of the two rapid methods, linear or um, dog legs. Um, there isn't really an advantage to one versus the other, as in, like I said before or earlier anyways, it's still going to take the same amount of time to get from X to, to Y, no matter how far it is or how you wrap it there. The limiting factor is going to be the longest axis uh, traveled is going to be the time limit in both scenarios. There's no faster way. It just comes down to what matches your cam system and what results in zero crashes. So um, typically linear is favored. It's um, what most cam systems default to in behavior and most newer machine machines will allow you to turn off dog legs and turn them on. So for example, in, in the Haas next gen control, I believe it's setting 335 and there's a switch there to, to toggle between dog legs or linear. Fnook has a parameter as well. I don't remember the parameter off the top of my head. Uh, some of the old Haas machines though, there's it's not parameter 335, it's something else like 315, but it's a global setting as well, and it has an effect on can cycles. So it's not a great option. So there you would want to stay in dog leg mode and just adjust master cam to match that. Um, so if you don't have the option to switch it, adjust master cam. If you do have the option, leave master cam alone, or at least make sure it's in linear and set your machine to linear. And then you should be crash free uh, the rest of your way through your programming journey.